Maybe you're like me and you saw the Sea of Ink come out in the spring and it definitely had your interest, but you just missed it and got stuck in your usual cycle of games. Social deception, extraction shooter, character abilities, it has the whole gamut of things that pique my interest. Well, I finally got a chance to play it thanks to Tripwire sponsoring this video, and I have some thoughts for anyone on the fence about buying it, especially while it's on sale. Before I played it, I didn't really understand what it was, and even a few hours in, I struggled to grasp what was happening. Sure, it's a social deception game but like what am I doing? You load into a match as a spy and are tasked with retrieving a briefcase from a secret lab. First, you and the other players must disable three vault terminals that are located in restricted areas. Core to this experience is being disguised as a civilian, a facade that is broken if you shoot, melee, or take damage. While disguised, you collect intel from items around the world, which gives you points to spend on resources like ammo and health, or you can use them to unlock doors. However, you can also find color coded key cards that give you access to their respective color restricted areas. But just because you have access doesn't mean you're allowed in. To get into a green staff room, you need to switch your disguise to one of the staff members wearing green around the map. Guard rooms require a blue guard disguise, or you can get a purple VIP guard or a rare golden VIP skin, which grants you access to all the rooms, but you risk standing out. Enter these job designated areas to gain access to the security rooms to contribute to the ultimate goal of unlocking the doors to secure the briefcase. Once the vault doors are open, you need to venture into a high security lab, get the briefcase, and extract at one of the three extraction points on the map. But the game will periodically ping your location so your enemies know you're coming. The game gets really interesting as you try to decipher who is a player and who is a harmless civilian, and you can gain clues as you collect intel around the world, for example, seeing another player subtly change disguises or not so subtly open fire on a suspected threat. Deceive is just as much about deduction as it is deception, and you'll definitely feel the heat if you guess wrong. Oh. Oh. Okay, I shot a civilian, but it was the wrong one! Damn it! Thankfully, not every character is played the same way. You select your spy from a range of characters that have different abilities like Chavez, who can throw up a temporary and vulnerability shield and pick off targets with his revolver, or a squire, who can scan for valuables in a large area around him and quietly take out targets with his suppressor. This is equally a hero shooter as it is a stealth game, so although you may have long, tense moments of espionage and skulking, that can rapidly come crashing down into a huge team fight in a group the who's who of marksmanship. Despite its cartoonish appearance though, there is some real depth to the gameplay here. How you manage and spend your intel points will impact your access to field upgrades which give you improvements like a larger wallet, greater health pool, or shorter time to return to your disguise. Which disguises you choose to roam the world can help you reach certain areas, but also make you stand out if, say, a three-man group of guards comes falling out of the ceiling. Even picking targets out of a crowd can leave you vulnerable for the rest of the match when health and ammo are scarce, and while all of this seems complicated, Deceive gives you gadgets to gather information on your foes, collect resources, and defend yourself to at least make your decisions a little easier, or at least more informed. Although the matches are short, about 15 to 20 minutes each, they are a tightrope of high risk, high reward decision making and combat. And speaking of combat, the Sieve is surprisingly an adept shooter that, as you might expect with the style of the game, leans toward the arcadey side where weapons have little bloom or recoil, maybe some of them have an alternate fire option, but for the most part it's point and shoot. Of course, that doesn't mean it isn't enjoyable, knocking down a trio while dodging their abilities or preventing them from escaping feels rewarding, akin to the other games with similar combat like Overwatch or X Defiant. If you get tired of using one character, you can unlock more by using credits earned in game, and each character has a progression tree to new abilities and weapons that give lots of toys to experiment with. To be honest, I'm not very good at this game, but I've been playing it with my girlfriend and my buddy, and we all agree there's something about it that keeps you coming back, wanting to improve despite any frustrations we encounter. And although I've enjoyed my time with Deceive, there are a few things I hope the developers can improve, especially as a new player wanting to get better at the game. For one, because the character shooter aspect is so strong, 
It is common for teams to shoot their way to victory instead of these spy mind games I think the audience wants in a social deception experience. The interplay of gadgets and abilities is interesting, but sometimes it can feel like stealth takes a backseat to laying down some lead. They do have the heat system where characters take increasingly more damage after killing too many civilians, but when a team shootout happens, there's little time to care. Also, once a player is down on the ground, it feels that almost every team shifts focus to camping that down player instead of going for the briefcase, the main objective of the game. This might be alleviated if you could revive a teammate away from where they were actually down, but so far the best solution to the stalemate is either a risky res from a distance with a spyglass, or just to go guns blazing and see who comes out on top, especially since you can win the game by defeating all the other spies, no briefcase necessary. And one other topic, just because I think players will want to know, the monetization in the game feels fair. Each season, there's a new catalog, Deceived's version of a battle pass, which you can purchase for real world money to progress through a list of premium skins. You can also redeem select free skins, but I mean, it's a battle pass. You probably know how those work. But one neat thing is if you get really into the game, you can go through the previous catalogs too. I was also really impressed with the matchmaking. You have options for trios, duos, a new beta mode, or solos, and you can quickly go from one match to the next, never having to revisit the main menu. This is probably assisted by the fact that Deceive is on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and is crossplay, so you can play with your buddies on different platforms, which, in my opinion, really needs to become a industry standard. The extraction shooter genre is increasingly filled with half-big titles and concepts, but this one approaches something palatable to a broader audience, and it feels like innovation. Which brings us to the question of the video, should you buy Deceive Inc? I would say so, especially on sale if it looks like something that will interest you. It's an extraction shooter that has a little bit of everything, but that does doesn't mean its identity is muddled by any of its inspirations. It's an adept spy game for the likes of James Bond or Ethan Hunt, where any mishaps you make can be solved with a little violence or a tactical retreat. And if nothing else, you can roleplay as your favorite furniture.